One of the traditions in our baccalaureate service here at Gordon-Conwell is to hear from some of our graduating students. And tonight, we will hear from three of them. First, Brian Carrier, graduating with a Master of Divinity from the Hamilton campus. Brian was born in Concord, Massachusetts, and raised near Reading, Pennsylvania. He's a graduate of UMass Amherst with a degree in mechanical engineering. Brian came to faith about seven years ago when he found himself questioning the nature of God and the meaning of life. After working for a couple of years in business, he embarked on a year-long journey that found him backpacking through South America and volunteering with missionaries in Swaziland, Africa. After graduation, Brian will be pursuing a ministry of discipleship in a local church. Second, we will hear from Paula Boranam, graduating with a Master of Arts in Urban Ministry from our Boston campus. Paula was born to missionary parents in Seoul, South Korea. A significant portion of her childhood and adult life has been lived in many nations, including South Korea, Australia, Philippines, England, Wales, Tanzania, Kenya, and the United States. She also has traveled extensively throughout Europe, as well as the Middle East, Central, and South America. Paula, we might ask, where have you not been? She graduated with a major in social work and sociology from here at Gordon College. And for the past seven years, she has worked as a youth worker, teacher, and mentor. After graduation, Paula would like to continue working with college students in Boston. And eventually, she would like to start an educational program similar to CUM, our Boston campus in Seoul, Korea. And then finally this evening, we will hear from one of our Doctor of Ministry graduates, Desmond So. Desmond is from Singapore, where he was born and raised, and today he serves as a missionary from that country. He worked in financial services for a number of years before leaving at his career peak to serve in missions. He spent nine years in Indonesia working as a tent maker, and prior to that he served as superintendent in a chain of international schools serving over 3,800 students and 400 expatriate teachers from 18 different countries. Desmond has been deeply involved in crisis relief and has worked with Christian organizations during the tsunami disaster of 2004, the Jakarta earthquake of 2007, the Padang earthquake in 2009, and the Mount Merapi crisis in central Java in 2010. He is married to Wendy, with whom he is on a one-year sabbatical leave in his country of Singapore. So first, Brian, then Paula, and Desmond in that order. Thank you, Dr. Hollinger. Well, many of you graduating, and I hope all of you teaching here uh, know the name Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas was an Italian theologian and philosopher who lived in the 13th century. Uh, he's one of the greatest minds that the Christian faith, and indeed the entire world, has ever known. He authored more than 60 works, the pinnacle of which was his three-part, 3,000-plus page Summa Theologica. Aquinas was so brilliant that he could dictate to four different secretaries at the same time. <clears throat> and yet, at the end of his life, Aquinas experienced a vision of God so profound that afterwards he simply found it pointless to write anything more. Listen to what he said about his life's work after receiving that vision. All I have composed, he said, seems like so much straw compared to what I have seen and what has been revealed to me. Let me repeat that. All I have composed, some of the greatest works that we know, seem like so much straw, worthless, compared to what I have seen and what has been revealed to me. This has been my experience at gordon Conwell. Now let me say right off the bat, I'm not comparing myself to Tommy Aquinas. <laughs> my professors haven't needed a beatific vision of God to recognize that my work is straw. <clears throat> but, like St. Thomas, 
I've begun to see that what I once thought was impressive is nothing compared to the glory of God. In my time at Gordon Conwell, I've experienced and I've been experiencing a shift in identity. My identity has been shifting from a foundation of sand from my own abilities to a foundation of rock, and that's being a child of God. When I came to Gordon Conwell about three years ago, my identity was rooted in sand. In other words, I derived a large part of my value from my abilities and my accomplishments. Uh, primarily my intellect, my reputation, um, my religious performance, if you will. And yet, from the very first day, on the very first class, God began attacking that sandy foundation. Uh, in spiritual formation, the class I thought would be my easiest that semester, and at the very beginning of his lecture, Dr. Kang started with the word prolegomena. I knew that I was in trouble. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't even pronounce the darn thing, let alone tell you what it meant. And for those of you who are wondering what prolegomena means, I, I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually it just means first words or introduction. But similarly, uh, in theology class, I, I constantly felt lost because students kept spouting off names of people I had never heard of. Um, I had to learn how to read and write again. The engineering background didn't help me much there. So I spent most of my first year studying a book called How to Read a Book in graduate school. Um, and I was constantly blown away by the brain power of, of these men and women sitting behind me and by theological concepts that are just far too great to even begin to understand. So God has shown me at Gordon Conwell that I can't root my identity in my, my intellect. He's also showed me that I can't root my identity in my religious performance. I've been surrounded here by people who have far greater faith than mine, people who are far more generous than I am, and people who pray a heck of a lot more than I do. Most of all, though, I've, God has allowed me to fail repeatedly in my own struggles against lust and impurity, and I know that it is only by the grace and power of God that I'm able to be pure. So God has shown me that I can't root my identity in my religious performance either. And he showed me the same thing. Uh, I can't root my identity in my reputation, my accomplishments, my career, my wealth, or my appearance, except maybe my hair. Uh, <laughs> I've been told here this is like my number one spiritual gift, actually. <laughs> but, but seriously, um, when we try to... Um, derive our identity from these things, we're trying to derive our value apart from God. And consequently, they're all hollow and unstable. They're all sand. You see, when we base our identity on these things, our sense of worth, our sense of value will constantly be at the mercy of our circumstances. We will continuously be at the mercy of other people's opinions of us. We'll overwork ourselves trying to maintain our image. I'm becoming more and more convinced that the only place we can find true security and true peace is when we root our identities in God. So in my time here at Gordon Conwell, God has been breaking down that foundation of sand, but he's also been building up my identity on a foundation of solid rock. I'm becoming more and more rejoiceful simply in the fact that I am a child of God. You see, the more time I spend with God and the more I learn about him, the more I'm convinced that there is nothing, no greater identity we can have than simply being his child. There's no greater value than being related to the infinitely glorious and beautiful creator of the universe. There's no greater sense of worth than knowing that the King of Kings gave his life in exchange for yours. There's no greater honor than bearing the name of the Most High. There's no greater security from knowing that God Almighty is the one who loves you and cares for you. There's no greater satisfaction than seeing the ruler of the universe acting on your behalf. And so, brothers and sisters, this is the thought I want to leave you with as you go out into your ministries. You are all children of God. Let your identities rest in this 
rather than in your performance. Let your goal be an increasing love of God rather than a growing reputation. Let your criteria for success be obedience to God rather than the number of your publications or the size of your church. And so, brothers and sisters, simply learn what it means to be children of God. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Paula, and I'm getting my master's in urban ministry, and um, I wanted to tell you my story of my first year at CUNY. One day, the first day, the first week of Akim, I was taking the bus, and I was approached by a few men on the bus. And I was racially profiled, and I was sexually harassed. And that time, I was shocked. I had my backpack on, and I was shocked the fact that all I wanted to do was to go to school, and I'm making a big investment to the ministry. That was my thought. That was my selfishness, and that was my attitude. So when that happened to me, I started screaming, can somebody help me? Is anyone there? But people were in fear, and no one responded. That time I walked and I went, went back to Kim, and I was angry, and that's how I started and going into classroom. I was mad and upset. I felt marginalized. I felt really helpless. And let's fast forward, and it's my third year at CUM. For those that know me at CUM, they know I smile a lot, and there's a reason why I smile. On my third year, I was approached by a few other men on the train. And one time, this guy looked at me, and he, he started talking to me with those you know, nice words, saying he was looking at my appearance and he was approaching me with the same racial profile and also talking to me in sexual ways. That time, I was able to look at him and I took my time to listen to him and I was able to smile at him and I began to listen to his story. And then I asked him who he was, what his name was, and I began to exchange. And he told me that he was passionate about people because he offered me a job to be an escort. <laughs> so I'm like looking at him because if that was two years ago, I would have been really upset. i will be mad and frustrated. I would have been fighting. I would have been go going crazy. But this time I looked at him and I asked him, how old are you? And he was 28. And he said he was passionate about people, and I said, I'm passionate about people too. But the thing is, I took it as a privilege and an opportunity because my identity was not in the people, but I, my identity was in Christ. And that's my experience at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. There are thousands and thousands of stories, not just mine, but many of my classmates. And they start sharing about their ministry. They were able to open up to me and others about who they really are. And that really broke me. That changed me and that healed me. And God is real. And my question for you is, do you love Jesus? Because I began to love Jesus more. I began to love my neighbors more. For the past six years, I've been living in a roaming house, a transition home, with all kinds of people you can't imagine. And I thought they were crazy, and they thought I was crazy. But by this time, I can tell you, they have become my close friends. And I can definitely tell you, it's challenging to love. Because it's so challenging, you begin to appreciate Jesus. Because it's so hard, you begin to believe it and you get to see that Bible is real. That Jesus' ministry is so necessary. So I wanted to challenge you guys to love God right and not to be afraid. 
and let God work in you and be honest with yourself. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. That is good because in Indonesia, whenever I come up to the podium, I say shalom. Everybody greets me. Shalom. Let's do that again. Shalom. Shalom. Peace be with you. This is a world that knows no peace. This is a world that is broken. This is a world that's filled with disease, disasters, danger and even death. And the question for all of us tonight is this, what next? What is your next step? Where will you be heading towards? What would you do? That is my question that I ask myself tonight, and I believe some of us here are asking those questions as well because we face a world that is broken, and we face a world that has a lot of problems. So how do we go from here? Let me share with you a real experience a couple of years back. When I first started out my DMIN program in 2009, I was also working as a tent maker in Indonesia as a superintendent of a chain of schools. And the school was growing rapidly, and because of that, we had to do an extension program whereby we built a new building, and th this is in March 2009, and the new semester will start in July 2009, and we have not done anything yet. 300 students will enroll into the school, and I have no space for them. And guess what? The architect was still busy trying to pile, you know, doing the piling of, you know, that little long shaft thing that you pile in, and he was doing that for over a month. And I was getting desperate and, and anxious because the parents were asking me, are we ready for the new academic year? And I said, yes, we will get ready. And I went to Anto and I asked him, I said, when will we be ready? You have not even laid anything yet. I don't see anything except this tong, tong, tong sound every day. And you know, you know what he said to me? He said, sir, if you want to go high, you need to go deep. Let me say that again. If you want to go high, you need to go deep. In many ways, this is what is needed for you and I today. We have been equipped by our professors here. I know for a certainty I will never preach a sermon without considering Christ. I know that I have been given tools to preach, to preach with variety, to teach and preach with passion. And I'm grateful to Gordon Conwell for that. And I'm especially grateful to my professors for teaching me. But in order for us to build up and to build the kingdom of God, we need to go deep. If you want to go high, you need to go deep. We need to lay the foundation stones, which Christ is the chief cornerstone for all of us today. Many of you know exegesis. Many of you will know how to read your people, your sheep, as you shepherd them, as you grow your church, as you translate the Bible into a different language, as you go to the distant land to reach an unreached people group. Whatever you do, remember this. If you want to go high, you need to go deep. Continue on the work be a lifelong learner. And I have purposed in my heart that this will not be the last of doing my thesis and reading assignments or articles and books. 
and I've purposed in my heart that I will go deep and to know Christ and to taste him and know him as my own. So that as I built upon the foundation that I have gained in Gordon Conwell, so that when I go and preach the gospel, I can lay myself on a solid foundation that was built upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. Earlier we sang a song. It says, In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand. As you go forth, as you build for the kingdom of God, as you go to great heights of accomplishments, remember this, if you want to go high, you need to go deep. May God help all of us today.